<laughs> and I, I, I like pointed at his face and I said, if you're the snake, I will never be your friend. When you get the call for this show, are there hesitations? Was it an immediate yes? I'd love to hear from all of you just what your thoughts were going in and why you said yes. So when I was first contacted about the show, um, you know, I people know me from Naked and Afraid, Naked and Afraid XL. They know me from being the host of Dual Survival on Discovery. Like, I'm the survivor guy, but um, my my clear weakness is with people. Like, I always I always ruffle feathers. You know, I always end up hurting somebody's feelings. And so they called me and they said, hey, we have a social challenge for you. And by the way, you get to wear clothes. So I said, done, check, check. I get boots, I get to wear my cowboy hat, I'm in. Cool, Earl, what about you? Well, for me, I mean, they kind of emailed me early about it, maybe a month ahead of time, but I didn't think anything else about it. They didn't tell me what it was or anything. So I get the call, I'm on, I've been in Hawaii for two weeks with my family, so I've been relaxing on the beach. And then I get the call, say, like, hey, are you ready to do it now? Like literally the next day. And I was like, there's no way. So they gave me like a couple more days and then straight from Hawaii to Costa Rica. Not a clue what I was getting into. Didn't know any survivors were involved. Didn't know the nature of the game, nothing. So I went in totally just as a rookie. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Earl, I mean, you will. Uh, yeah, you know, they gave me a heads up about it, and I, I thought it sounded just a really interesting premise, right? They, they described it as like kind of like Survivor, but more like an outdoor escape room uh, and maybe some like kind of like mafia kind of thing. So I thought it was really uh, intriguing. I didn't think it was going to work, though, because they were really like like vague about the timing. And I'm like, look, I have a job. I can't, I can't just like disappear. <laughs> and I finally got to the point where I basically would say, like, I think I can't do this. Like, you know, but but finally it came together at the very end. And I was like, I was excited to do it because I was like, you know, it's been a while and how often you get a chance to do something like this. And the whole premise just seemed really interesting to me. Yeah, it was fun. What about you, Malcolm? But my experience was similar to Yule's. Like I had, there was a lot of notice, but it was very last minute when, you know, it's like, okay, it's time to go. And I'm, oh, so like next month? No, in like two days. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then the one thing I was, uh, the one thing I was, I heard the mole at some point and I always loved that growing up. So. Um, I was, you know, intrigued. It's in the jungle. There's going to be like some, um, you know, elements from this other show I really like. So it's kind of, it was one of those things. Yeah, sure. I was very passive about it the entire time. But then when the call came, I um, was really excited, but no concrete direction. Right. And you guys obviously all played Survivor, but you never played together. But I know you and Early kind of have a friendship. So were you like, okay, I, I know their game a little bit better than maybe Jeff, so like maybe I can suss them out a little bit better? What were you guys thinking going in with, I guess, knowing their games and on Survivor at least? Well, with Yule, because I knew him a, a, a little bit, I thought he would make a good snake because, you know. Be I thought the same thing about Earl. <laughs> yeah, so he thought the same thing about me. And see, I didn't know Malcolm that well. And Malcolm was a great guy, but I didn't know him at all. I'd never seen any of his seasons. And I think he had been on there three times, and that's three seasons that I missed. So I didn't have a clue anything about him. And I had never seen Naked and Afraid with uh, Jeff on it. I might have, but you know, to you's point, he's always says that, you know, I didn't recognize him with his clothes on. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just knew he was yeah, like, I thought <laughs> He was loud, yes, I can still hear him. Uh, I thought Earl, like when I saw him, I was like, oh, like this is great because like we actually kind of know each other. And, you know, I, I also thought to Earl that because he was such a stand up guy, like he played a really, you know, lots of integrity, that he would probably make the perfect snake. They'd probably want to get someone like him. Um, but then I think in some ways, the fact that we kind of knew each other also hurt us because I think there was an assumption of kind of trust on each other. I just kind of thought Earl would believe me in general when I kept saying I'm not the snake. And when I finally realized he really didn't believe me, it was almost kind of like too late. So I think there was that level of familiarity, which if you didn't have, would have otherwise kept your guard up a little bit more. Mm. Yeah. On the show, you'll see, I feel like it's it's Yule versus Earl a little bit in terms of like, <laughs> I don't believe anything he's saying. <laughs> that's, that's how it was. That's accurate then. <laughs> well, the funny thing about this show is- i sure Jeff didn't believe me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is they drop you in the jungle and like, I think, you know, we'll see from other episodes, people are not used to that, but you guys have more or less survived in the wilderness, obviously Jeff, and then you guys on Survivor. So 
We don't really see that element as being like difficult. Was it difficult or was it like easy for you guys? That it was, was a piece easy. of cake, man. Yeah, I was <laughs> waiting for Jeff to go. That's the easiest damn thing. We're closed. Oh, <laughs> that was so easy for Jeff. I mean, the guy, I remember him sleeping in the hammock and like, we're we're all in a sleeping bags, like scared of everything around us, like the mosquitoes, like, gosh, it sucks out here. And Jeff is like in a hammock swinging. Like a baby. Spring uh, off like on a, his face. Like a sawmill. Oh gosh, it was nothing for him. He slept like a baby. It might have been the best night's sleep I've ever had. Like I, when we walked into camp, I saw a hammock hanging. Like I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I thought we were going to be sleeping in the dirt, eating, you know, eating whatever I was able to hunt and kill before the sun went down, which wasn't very long. Like I had no idea that we were getting a hammock and these dudes were getting sleeping bags. Like, I think I slept better that night than any night in my life, honestly. Oh man, it was a hot for us. Yeah, I mean, Earl, it's been a while since you've been on Survivor. Were there any like flashbacks or were you like totally different experience? You no, know, you can't help but get the flashbacks. I mean, that was my uh, first time in many, many years to be doing professionals and here I'm competing against other people, I'm against the elements. And so you kind of slip into survivor mode, but this is so different. You just don't have any time to talk to one another, to gauge people, to read people. And it's just rush, rush, rush. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I got a little soft and tender in these years, you know, so being out there was, was, was rough. I was, flew from a Hawaiian vacation to rough it in Costa Rica. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. Um, obviously, the clues they're giving you guys like are are tied. They're very specific. They could be tied to two people, but mostly they're tied to one. How much second guessing were you doing? How much were you thinking about those clues, or or was it more how people were acting? I guess like talk to me about the clue situation because I know you'll there's a very specific one for you. Yeah, we spent a lot of time just obsessing about the clues, trying to parse it, interpret it, and and it was hard because. You know, in my case, like the, the clue, the second clue in particular pointed squarely at me, but I knew I wasn't the snake. So I was trying to kind of read what other pieces of information could be kind of applied to other folks. And, you know, at one point I started thinking like, this kind of fits Malcolm. Like some of these things around playing with a ball, kind of the Ivy League thing, you know, went to Dartmouth. Uh, the thing that just kind of didn't make sense to us, I think all of us, is just the third clue around the wrestling with alligators. Because we thought that that was going to be the most important clue. Like Bobby Bones basically told us, like, like this is going to be the most important clue. You guys have to get this thing. And so we all expected, oh, when we won the challenge, here it is. And then it points at Jeff talking about wrestling alligators. And then it kind of just, I think, threw all of us off. And I don't think any of us had any idea that there was some relationship between Malcolm and alligators. So then that just kind of threw all of us, I think, off the, off the set. Yeah, Malcolm, did you know what the clues were going to be when they were read or no? Uh, no, I had uh, no idea. My understanding is that some of future snakes, uh, other people in the series did have some clue and like it was a case by case basis. But no, I didn't know what was coming um, when they read the first one about college involved, I thought I could play that off easily enough. The second one, the, everyone got hung up on bar and ivy stuff. That was easy enough to get onto. That wasn't easy, but I was, you know, able to push that off to you. But when we got, when they win the third challenge, I say they, because I didn't win it. I was trying to do everything not to win it. <laughs> when they win it, I, I just, my face is completely dropped. And the minute Bobby reads it, uh, it, it took like half a second and Jeff screaming. I frightened right up. I, I got it. Like I can play this one off. Like, so I was very surprised that it wasn't more specific to, I agree with those guys, but um, Jeff did spend the entire night before talking about alligators. <laughs> all we heard was alligators. Yeah. 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 Like all he did was talk about alligators and this belt he has and like all, he's wearing an alligator belt. Like all he did was talk about this. And I did sort of, it went through my head that night that, um, Maybe I shouldn't volunteer my own stories at this moment. Like, so I just, it's, oh, it's no. very, also the easiest thing in the yeah. world is to just let Jeff talk. So yeah. it wasn't like a hard, <laughs> it, just yeah. let him go. I'm just, I'm not going to volunteer any more personal information um, than I need. Well, here's, here's the thing, like Yule and uh, me and Yule, if we would have gotten together after this final clue, we didn't have a chance to, but if right. we had gotten together and talked, we could have figured this out because Yule could have been like, hey, Jeff, the second, there, the second clue clearly pointed at me. The third clue clearly points at you. 
we, we, you know, like if we would have been able to talk and realize these clues are pointing to the people that are not the snake, right. they're not right. literal in their meaning, then you and I would have been like, okay, it's either, you know, Malcolm or, uh, or Earl. And, and, and then I think we would have had it because, um, I trusted Earl for whatever reason, you know, Earl and I, I just had a trust with him. Yeah, I knew I, it was I, Earl. So we were, I, we were close. pointed a little bit more at at Malcolm, right? The Ivy thing. And then, uh, so, you know, it did seem like, yeah, I, I really, I, so again, I think the, the producers did a pretty good job. Like, cause the hard thing is that we don't have infinite amounts of time. If we did, I think all this stuff, like you could probably figure out, but it's just enough time where you can start getting into it, but not enough. So I think, I mean, Malcolm, you said this yourself, if this had yeah. gone on just even a few more hours, hours. we had a few more conversations, probably would have done it. But again, you played a brilliant game. Yeah, a few more hours. I was holding on to a first quarter lead is what I've been saying. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I never, yeah, I never got a chance to really talk to you about anything. Yeah. So, you never so yeah, a few more hours and they would have had it. I was wondering. Yeah, we didn't get a lot like, of time to. Um, did you guys have time to strategize? You needed a majority vote. So was there enough time? Yeah, that was my question for sure for you guys. We did get a lot of time to talk to each other, especially separately from each other. Like we're mostly together most of the time. At one point we did consciously make a decision. Hey, let's give each other opportunities to talk to each other one-on-one, -on -one, but that only happened one time. Hated so I that. think if we had had that round before we went into the snake pit, it may have turned turned out differently, but yeah. it was just hard for us because like in my case, I thought it might be Malcolm at some point, but I didn't want to accuse him in front of him because then it seemed like he might be the only ally I might potentially have. So yeah, it, it was hard to have those conversations. You know, another thing that I never really thought about that kind of, you know, helped the whole situation. There was a long delay for that first challenge that we had, like hours, like we were just sitting there, we couldn't talk. Then we finally did a challenge and made it to the, the camp. It was really late at night. So we were yeah. really tired and exhausted. Yeah. So we couldn't talk all night. Everybody was really tired. So if it was like during the day and we had like eight hours to actually talk to each other, we probably would have learned more about each other as opposed to maybe the hour and a half we might have stayed up to talk, thinking we would have more time. We just didn't have more time. I just remembered that I refused to go to bed first. I was not going to leave you guys around the fire. I just remembered that. You guys kept telling me, go lay down, go lay down. I wouldn't go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with all of these arguments about the time thing. It is very constrained, like the amount of time you're actually allowed to have conversations. So, but you know, they were, again, just a few more hours and then it's, it probably works out in their favor. It works out. At, at the same time though, I just want to you know, be super clear. Malcolm played a really, really yeah. awesome game. Like he did a lot of really smart, subtle moves throughout the game that just kind of threw us off. Like, you know, the first challenge, he kind of framed like Earl losing the snake bit as like, you know, he, he kind of basically threw Earl under bus to me and immediately caused me to anchor on, on Earl. And he did some other things to kind of build up credibility over the course of the game. So Malcolm just did a brilliant job. And, and I don't know, if, why, don't we, why don't we go into this? Malcolm did some things even before the game. <laughs> like, yeah. We're like, yeah. kind of next level stuff, so. That's fine, yeah. Malcolm, <laughs> what, was there some pre-gaming? Oh, pre-game, what the hell? This guy, he got <laughs> faced off his rocker the night before the, the challenge and so he showed up morning one to the helicopter i look over i see this guy with he looks like sh scraggly hair like his face is all blotchy he's puking his guts out and i'm thinking production just hired a homeless guy to help us out with the helicopter <laughs> like i i'm starting to be i'm starting to think like like this is dangerous now right like this guy's gonna start helping us like rig our harnesses for the for the helicopter. And then I learned that Malcolm is one of us. Like he's one of me. And like instantly I feel bad for the guy. I'm yeah. like, oh no, dude, like you're so sick before the challenge begins. And like he totally fooled me. Like it, uh, um, I mean, you got to credit the guy. I, I would have never thought somebody no would have done that. <laughs> were you actually, were you playing it up all with Malcolm or were you actually? No, I, 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 took a bottle of rum to the face the night before on purpose to make myself sick. I claimed it was food poisoning to these guys. Um, and we all like had shellfish the night before. We hadn't met each other yet, but we, that was something I could lean into. Like I just, something just hit me wrong. And then I made sure that I lost my uh, breakfast in front of them before the game started. Yeah. Um, just to get that little bit of, so dragging in challenges, but also just, you know, throw them off the scent a little bit, even though I smelled exactly like I'd been pre-gaming. 
It was bad. <laughs> it was totally convincing because he was legitimately sick. I mean, there was no yeah, doubt about it. It wasn't at some point, like I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Production came in, they got the medic, and they were taking his like blood pressure. Yeah, stuff. they he almost, all that they almost brought in the alternate. So we were like, holy yeah. cow, this guy is really messed right. up. Wow. Super I, didn't, I didn't mean it for. I didn't mean for it to go that far necessarily. I didn't <laughs> when they started like taking my blood pressure and like considering pulling me. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that, but I, you know. Oh, wait, actually had an alternate. Yeah, do you guys know who it was? Nope. Sure, yeah. We don't? Wait, do you nope. know? No, no I, I don't. I, I don't. Oh, sorry. No. But no. I will say, Malcolm, you did do a good job because the entire episode, my mind kept changing, but I really didn't think it was you at all. Um, I did know that I feel like you lived abroad a lot, so I feel like there were parts of your life that probably people didn't know about. So I mm -hmm. thought, okay, well, he could have took the bar exam. We don't know. Like, he's a smart guy. Perfect. So... But uh, Earl, I, I just thought maybe it was you because you were going hard on Yule and I was like, and that stick, that stick really did. <laughs> <laughs> or the snake, the snake. That you the, the piece. Oh, the snake, the, yeah. the oblong thing. Yeah, that, I mean, that was, that was because of all the cameramen that were there you know, in the way. I couldn't throw it too far. So I just had a little patch of sand. <laughs> but you know, Malcolm gave us me another clue. Said, you know, maybe you did accidentally step on it or on purpose when we were both looking for it. Yeah, I always found it weird. Like, how can it just wash? It was kind of made of metal. It was pretty heavy. That's why we couldn't really swim with it. I said, how can it just disappear and wash away so easily? Because I grounded into the beach. <laughs> yeah, it, was, yeah, it was just weird, yeah. But, well, it was uh, a super fun watch. Like, any regrets from doing the show or any fun memories that you guys have from it? I uh, I, I remember when Malcolm and I went and uh, we did our one-on-one -on -one talks. And um, I remember telling him, I said, Malcolm, I said, if, if it's not Yule, it's you. <laughs> and I, 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 like, pointed at his face and I said, if you're the snake, I will never be your friend. Like, <laughs> this is over between us. And I, I was so, like, into this, because, like, this was, like, this competition really, really got, like, your heart into it, you know? And I remember telling Malcolm, like, we're never going to be friends if this is you. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I feel bad for saying that now, because, like, like uh, you know, if I was told I was a snake, I would have lied to every single one of these guys, you know? Everybody. So, uh, but Malcolm, I mean, he uh, he did play an amazing game. Like he he deserves the money for yeah, what he was able to do, for yeah. sure. He deserves the money. I mean, I, I could say the survivor thing definitely kicks in too, because the closer you get to the money, to that end, you know, you're willing to do even more things. And that's why I kept thinking like, oh, you was gonna try anything now. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you're thinking on so many different levels. Cause I'd already ruled out Jeff. I said, I know it's not Jeff. It was between Yule and Malcolm. And I remember saying like, it, it might be Malcolm. This might be it. And it was just that one final moment where it's like, it was really just a toss up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I was gonna say, Erlen and Jeff, did you consider writing Malcolm's name down at all, or or either each other's name, or just you all? We 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 considered writing Malcolm's name down for oh, sure yeah. because I because it, for for me it was like it was obvious that it was Yule in my mind, but it's possible that it's Malcolm. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm either gonna have to vote with what I actually think it is, or I'm gonna have to vote on the other possibility and assume that I'm wrong. And like, and that was, that was so scary. The thought of voting yeah. for, for the person that you didn't think it was, like that was so scary because you would have, you would have uh, always, you know, regretted your decision, you know? It was so close. I, it was yeah. right. Like either you're you or I was going straight to I feel like I saw the moment in Earl's eyes when he decided to stick with Yule. Uh, but it's, it's also tricky because um, because it has to be unanimous, right? Like I kept switching yeah. the survivor mindset with like, okay, yeah. if I, like, how do I a split? But I, I would just accidentally go to like the rules of like post-merge survivor in my right. head, like trying to think about how to split votes and things like that. But um, and again, to give them credit on like, there just wasn't a lot of time. After that last clue was read, these guys didn't get to talk until we got to the snake pit, which was again, another, yeah. oof, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, so they basically had to be on the same page um, immediately. So that was more just holding onto the rope a little bit longer. So they didn't have time to really switch it or like talk about switching it, which helped. Got it.
I'm but, curious to see on the other episodes, is it more often the case that the snake wins or the other people win? I'm, I'm curious to see how that goes. Same. We don't know. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't think anybody's seen very many. And I'm I'm curious to see how the how obvious the clues are if they're always like that. Like I feel like my yeah. Team, yeah I don't know. But you all you who did you vote for again? I ended up voting. Jeff, that's a good question. I, think I voted Jeff, for right? Jeff. You, you voted Jeff. for yeah. me. I remember this. You I remember that. Me. I was like, yeah, and yeah. that and that solidified my yeah. idea that you were the snake because I'm like, well, the snake's now pissed off that I just cost him the money, so of course yeah. he's going to throw my name in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't think it was Jeff, but again, Malcolm did a really a, a really good, smooth move. So basically what ended up happening was, I was going in thinking it was probably Malcolm, because I, again, I didn't think it was Jeff. Like, if it was Jeff, he did this thing on the third challenge where he basically saved the challenge, and he didn't need to. Like, we couldn't find the key underneath the boy, and then Jeff, like, basically said, all right, let's turn over the boy, and then we find the key. So I'm like, okay, I don't think it's Jeff. Plus, the third clue was too obvious. Like, I knew that the clues had this pattern of being too obvious, because you know, like, the second clue pointed at me. I thought it was probably Malcolm, and I, at that point, I was fairly sure. But I knew that, like, I didn't think I was going to be able to convince the guy. So at some point, Malcolm proactively says to me, hey, maybe it's Jeff. Maybe we should be voting for Jeff. Brilliant move on his part, because from that point on, I'm like, look, I know it's not me. So if they vote for me, we have a 0% chance of winning. At least if it's, the vote goes towards somebody else, even though I don't really think it's Jeff, it's at least a not a zero possibility. So then at that point, I'm like, look, if there's any chance in hell that Malcolm's gonna go vote for Jeff, I'll vote for Jeff. So even though I didn't think it was him, but again, it was a really good move on Malcolm's part. Malcolm, really if you got one vote, it, you still would've got the money? Yes, so it has to be yeah. unanimous with the other three. So that's how the, the Got it. that's why it, yeah, that was, um, it, it makes it, oh, it's very played. different from Survivor. Yeah, it's very tricky to hold the rules of this new thing in your head. This very condensed new thing yeah. in your head versus yeah. this thing that we're all used to doing. Well, yeah. well, I know we got to wrap up soon, but any other TV shows you guys are itching to be on or I know everyone wants to know, would you go on Survivor again and things like that? Or are you guys done with TV now? What's going on with that? I'm done with yeah. anything that involves going on a beach and being half naked. I think I'm, I think I'm over that. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, like starving, running around, camping, I don't think it was like Jeff asked us at one point, hey, would you guys want to do Naked Afraid with me? And we're like, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> ever. Hey, hey, what I, I would die. I even got the, Jeff has some incredible stories, incredible stories. Like mm -hmm. I said, no way I would do that. I would do Survivor I'm, again, for sure. You know, I've done some other shows uh, since my first time on there. Uh, but, you know, I'm enjoying the dad life now and I'm, I'm you know, I'm chilling now. You know, I think that's what Malcolm wants to do now. <laughs> you know, just relax, enjoy the money, new life, all that good stuff. And I, I'm gonna go back on the bowl and beautiful. He is quite no. a good actor. Yeah, no. that's right. You did do that. I saw that episode. <laughs> he was so nervous. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the cringiest 15 seconds of, and that's saying something considering it's a daytime soap. Um, it's so bad. No, I don't. I would. I, it's it's always hard to say no because, you, like, how many people like would you know kill to get the opportunities that we get to be called to do these things? So I I had never like say no, but like they said, um, this is the grown up money. I'm in my mid thirties. Girlfriend needs a ring. Like we gotta fuck <laughs> down over here. So. Yeah, we're gonna enjoy this one, and then if, um, if, but if the call comes in, you always take it in my book, just to see if you want to go play on an obstacle course in like the most beautiful place on earth. It's like kind of hard to say no. We so. would all do it. Yeah, and uh, I, uh, I actually leave on my next challenge in six weeks. Where so, you going? Uh, I, don't I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I can't, another naked and afraid. I can't confirm or deny the name of the show, uh, contractual oh. reasons. However. Uh, it's gonna be the biggest, baddest thing I've ever attempted to this point. So I, I, I'm excited about it and I'm hoping actually to learn, um, to take what I've learned from these three and apply it to this next thing I'm doing because there's actually an element of some social sabotage that may be involved. And so um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with you guys and I'll let you know whether the, you know, the skills that you guys taught me from Survivor hopefully helps to get me uh, get me winning this next challenge. Jeff, are you wearing clothes? Um, I don't think so. Gonna give it away. I, uh, All right, I, I, uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna be wearing Temptation clothes. Temptation Island. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he's gonna be a love island. Yeah, so whatever it is, yeah. <laughs>